This tutorial is just going to walk you through creating your Unshape account. I'm using Google Chrome to access the Unshape account. You can use any web browser, but for me Google Chrome gives you easier access to change some of the settings if certain things go wrong. So into Google I'm just going to type in Unshape. Of course you can type into the web bar, um, the address bar onshape.com, that's fine as well. I'm just showing you uh, an alternative way for accessing this as well. The top link is the one that you want and then I'm going to go to sign in. Once I click on sign in, you can see that my account is already there, but for a student, they might see don't have an account and you're going to sign up there. And if this is just your first time using it, this is exactly how you do it as well. As you scroll down, you see you've got a number of options. On shape education is the one that we're looking at, so we're going to go ahead and click education account. Uh, moving through here, you can see again loads and loads of options and it's shown you through some simple tutorials. Um, of what you can do that are really useful in the long run. I'm going to create a free account and this is where you just need to walk through all of your details. Students will need an email address so the way that I use this is students use their school email address into that bar so you type it in your name and if you're under a certain age you'll just need to get per parental permission to sign up and use this. You'll notice as well there's a lot of American options so for school we're just using grade school in that one and then you're putting if you're a student or an educator into these boxes and you'll create an edu account. So if I just run through this as test check the box and then create edu account. You'll see hopefully it'll allow me through with the test account. And then you see it starts to ask you more information about the school and to check some boxes. All fairly straightforward. And again, I encourage the students to use all of their school information and not share any of their personal details. So they get the school web address, the city, the state, which they might need to explain what that means. Then the graduation year, they'll just need to figure out what that is for whatever year that they're based in. And once they've done all of that, it's signed up, that's it. They'll get an email, you click the link and activate the account. So if I go back now to unshape.com, when I sign in, and they'll be able to do exactly the same once they've activated their account from their email, they type in their address, the password that they've set up, and you sign in, okay? So like I said, it is so straightforward and it's fantastic that it's free. So these options on the left here, show that you can keep a nice easy track of all the work that you've done and, and that that you've created. Um, you can have different options here were shared with me. The beauty of this being online is that you can collaborate with students really, really well. They can share their work with you to have a look where they might have made a mistake and you can really help them out. Um, students quite enjoy submitting their work through this because it's so easy as well. So they share it to your email and you can see exactly how they're getting on and the progress that they're making. Once you're in here, to start a project, you have the create button at the top. So you can create documents, folders, you can do all sorts, but most of the time you're just going to be creating a document. And when you've created that document, you can name it. I'll just call it test for now. And once we're going through, it will load up my workspace. Your workspace just consists of three work planes. And all that means is the way in which you're looking at the product. So if I want to create the product as if I'm looking at it from above, I'd use the top from the side, I'd use the right, and in front, obviously, I'd use the front. Okay, a couple of buttons on your mouse that are worth knowing. If you right click, you can move it round in three, in three dimensions and rotate it round there. With your scroll button on your mouse, you can zoom in and out of your object. Left click allows you to select things as well. And then the final one, if you middle click, you can move the, the workspace around the screen to position it in the centre. The other nice one, if none of that's working and students might find that they haven't got a mouse, they're using a trackpad on their keyboard, which makes it a little bit trickier, but it is, does still work, you can use this cube in the top right corner. So you can click on the surfaces to look from different angles and the corners, the edges, all sorts, to rotate this workspace around. And say it's disappeared off to the side, you can then recover that by just clicking on this cube in the top corner. So it's really, really useful. 
Here we've got some rendering options. So when you start drawing objects, you can you can view them in different ways using that option, which is really nice. And on the left hand side, you've got your history, your kind of timeline of everything that you've done. It's your features list. So as you create sketches and parts and extrudes and all sorts, they're all listed in chronological order down there. So it's really nice to review and go back and make any edits, anything that you need to do. And as you're creating new parts, you've got your parts list just below as well. So all really, really useful. All of the functions are along the top, which you'll notice change occasionally. So if you go into a sketch, these options will change to, to ones that are specific to sketching. And the last few options that you need to know, you've got these, these options right above where you've got the name of the file, which you can change. And then you've got the menu. In the menu, the only one I tend to use is workspace units. So those workspace units, you can change to whatever units you're working in for your project. So that's whether you want to use millimetres, metres, centimetres, feet, inches. Try and encourage students to change that when they open it in the first instance, as opposed to midway through the project when it may get a little bit confusing. Hopefully that's um, going to help you get started with your on-shape journey. Good luck.